Hello, pianists. You just heard a fun performance demonstration of Takatina, written by E.L. Lancaster. You can practice and learn it out of two books, Alfred's Group Piano for Adults, Book 1, which is on pages 88 to 89, or Alfred's Piano 101, Book 1, pages 134 to 135. This piece sounds flashy. It's really fun to play with all the repetitive patterns in the hand. And it's one of those pieces that sounds harder to play than it actually is. We're going to talk through my musical learning pyramid. We'll go through the stages to lead us up to that Takatina style and mood. We're going to begin at the top of our musical learning pyramid on style and mood to understand what our goals are to build up to that. So our primary style comes from the title of Takatina. Takatina is a miniature version of a toccata. Many Baroque keyboard instrumentalists wrote toccatas, especially J.S. Bach has some very famous toccatas you can listen to. They're known to be very flashy, kind of improvisatory feeling. They're known to be very chordal, sometimes block chords, sometimes arpeggiated chords. They're supposed to be virtuosic and really fun for the performer and the audience to listen to. The toccata title actually means literally to touch. So it's known for these really crisp types of articulations, which is a great piece to fine tune that touch for you. Okay, before you can play it flashy and dramatic, we need to start back at the bottom of our musical learning pyramid on the rhythm to understand how to play it rhythmically correct. We'll first look at our time signature. Looks a little different than you're used to. You'll see a C with a line through it. This means cut time. Remember C means common time, which would be like a feeling of four. If you see the line through it, that means you feel two pulses per measure. So I'm going to demonstrate this again for the first line and count it out. So you could think one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. And one and two. So I would suggest you just even do some tapping along. I'm going to demonstrate that and then I'm going to play the first line again so you can tap along with me. So you can think left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, 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 hold, right. That's the primary pattern. Uh, measures 13. We have continuous um, quarter notes. So I'm going to play through measure 20 and you can practice tapping along with me. I'm going to slow it down about one and two and one. there went a little bit longer because I wanted you to have a feeling of how to count those rests at measures 19 and 23 and 24. So use your counting to not go over those rests so it's precise on the rhythm. I would suggest a performance goal of about a half note at 160, which is about what I took it at for that performance uh, demonstration. Uh, you can look through and you heard all of those repetitive patterns of quarter notes and the half notes. Be careful to hold the half notes, their full value. So think one and two and and then off for those eighth or quarter rest rather. All right, pianists, next let's move to the note reading and fingering category of our musical learning pyramid. So we'll look at our key signature first. We see one flat, which is B flat. For thinking major mode, that would be F major, or it could be the relative minor if we go down three half steps of D minor. That's confirmed if I look at the first measure and if I look at the fine measure at 20 where they end on D. So we're definitely in the key of D minor. You can warm up on that D minor five finger scale and chord. Let's jump into some landmark note reading. Look at your left hand first. It looks like it starts a step above that bass C. So I'm on D number three. The interval up from there is the fifth line to line, skips over line. All the way through this left hand is a span of a fifth. So use your five and ones nice and tall. I'm gonna keep it there. The right hand uses a third to start, space to space. And I have two landmark notes that can guide me for the right hand. I can see that middle C up a step, thumb is on D, or that F is a step below that landmark G. Lots of thirds in the right hand is one of the patterns. So I'm gonna get my hand set here, and it looks like it spans only a fifth. We'll talk about the position shifts in a moment. Before we go on, I wanna talk about the fingering category of the note reading. You have to have the correct fingers to be able to play the notes accurately. I'm looking at measure three, and above the staff in green, you'll see some uh, fingerings that you might want to use to keep you in a D5 finger scale of one, three, two, four, three, five, two, four, three, one. For me, I can play a little faster staying on my five finger scale rather than moving that. I think they just want to make sure you play it staccato. So you can use that fingering I have suggested, but just still make sure you disconnect those notes for the staccato touch. Also, I've changed up the fingering or suggested a different fingering change at major 20. Uh, we have fives listed on the score. 
which would let you feel the octaves, I understand that. Fives are weaker fingers a lot of times for pianists. I like to use my two fingers, really strong fingers, to get those accents nice and loud. I've also done the same thing at major 35 with that high A, strong finger two, strong finger two, down here. So you can try it out, that feels better in my hand, but you can use either one of those. Okay, let's go back to more of the note reading once you get your finger set. I have written above the staff lead sheet symbols. So you can go through and figure those out as well, but D, M means D minor for the hand position. Below the staff, I have a Roman numeral one, since we're in the key of D minor. It goes down a step to C major. The third line goes back up to D minor. 13 is a slash chord or an inversion of D minor over A. Major 15, one more fingering I should mention. It feels better for my one and three just to move by half steps to A major, back to D minor over A, A major, Ds. Careful at 21. This is the only chord, this one in 29, that uses our B flat for a G minor chord. Down a step to F, G minor. The last written line of the music is all A's. Da capo al fine, go back to the head of the piece. And then you finish up at major 20, a fine. Use those chord symbols. And in a reduced manner, I want you just to practice moving your hands and not watching things. D minor, down a step, back up. Get rid of the D, A major. The only spot you probably have to check would be these twos. Come back in, get your hands set, move it. That's really the span of the whole piece, kind of an outline of where your hands need to move. That will let you play fast if you reduce it down because you're thinking all of these groups of notes as one simple thought and you can move and not have to watch your hands. All right, spend some time getting comfortable at just the note reading, correct fingering in a steady beat before you go on to this next category of articulations. Once you get to articulations and dynamics, I think the style and mood really starts to come out of the piece. So to encourage you to play with correct articulations, I'm actually gonna demonstrate a poor way. So I'm going to ignore all of the staccatos and accents. I'm gonna play measures one through 20, and then we'll go back in and add those important details. That's the poor way. It changes the style completely. It sounds kind of semi-romantic. I was ignoring the rest and my left hand is playing all very slurred. So to be true to this two-touch style of a Takatina, pay attention to those staccatos. Imagine the keys are hot. Hold those half notes longer. Then pop off of those. So that's the primary touch of staccatos. And then there's two spots that I have accents, major 20. It's staccato and accented. Quick to the bottom of the key and pop out of that. And then the last two majors, 35 and 36. So I would just isolate those accents back to back, make sure that they have that similar type of tone and touch. Next, let's move up to the dynamics category of our musical learning pyramid. So on our score, I see a mezzo forte to start at the beginning of the line. Remember with dynamics in music, it doesn't always mean literally where you see the dynamic. It can mean more this phrase should be medium loud. But then the next two lines, five and nine, have nothing written. So I've added to the score some dynamic variety. When I start up a little higher in D minor, mezzo forte. When I sequence down lower, this is a broke thought, lower notes typically is softer. Back up to major nine, more of a medium forte volume. Those are four major phrases. 13 is a long phrase, back it off really soft. Gonna grow loud to the final. And I am just doing some reduction practice just to kind of set those dynamics. 21, subito, which means suddenly soft. Gonna get increasingly louder. Major 29, even louder. It's forte. Go to that fortissimo. So those are those different dynamic contrasts and variety we wanna bring out. I do want to mention the voicing aspect of dynamics category. This is not a melody accompaniment type of piece. The melody is really shared between the hands, so don't worry about voicing one hand louder than the other. It's just going to share that volume. We do want to go over phrase goals. Uh, typically, four major phrases would grow to the third major or the downbeat of the fourth, which this one does as well. So I'm going to go to that high point at the E and the G at major four. It's a longer note value, so it naturally sounds louder. So in your score, I've drawn arrows to show that's the richest point of the phrase. But remember, not all phrase goals are the same. They'll still be set within that context of dynamics. I'm going to play it with phrase goals in mind. Goal, come away. More of a goal. Back it off. Long 
crescendo gradually grow suddenly soft slight phrase goal To encourage you to add dynamics in, I'm going to actually play a poor way so you can hear what it sounds like when that's really lacking. That's not the style of a toccata at all. It's boring, it's plateau on the dy dynamics. So go back through, pay attention to those phrase goals, pay attention to the phrase variety. Remember when the notes go lower, typically softer. When they're higher, getting louder. Pace it out where you have short four major phrases and then you have long major phrases from 13 through 20. All of the details of our musical learning pyramid really accumulate to create the fun style and mood of the flashy Takatina. So reminder, fill that cut time of our time signature, that way it's, it's fast and flashy. Go through and label those chords. You can think in a reduced manner, that way your hands can move quickly. Trust those moves, except for those large octave jumps. Otherwise, if it's moving by steps, just trust the way that feels. Lively articulations is critical in this piece, so short staccatos, loud accents, bringing those out, phrase goals, and phrase variety. So go through all of these stages, take your time to build it up into this fun performance of Takatina.